Hello, welcome to Managing Digital Research Data at ANU. My name is Zhe Xiaowen. I'm an e-research support officer, work with Open Research Team at the Australian National University. Open Research is a university's digital repository. It's responsible for collecting and disseminating scholarly material open access. Open Research Team also manages a data repository for the university called ANU Data Commons. I'll talk about ANU Data Commons later on. You are encouraged to contribute to your undergraduate and a master by coursework thesis by clicking on this contribute button. If you are a postgraduate research student, your thesis will be automatically deposited into Open Research. This workshop will cover definitions of data, data management, benefits and requirements, uh, how you manage your data, and use data management services, writing a data management plan. Throughout the workshop and the training menu, data will refer to digital research data. We are offering a very simple definition here. Any data that is created during research and can be stored on a computer. It can be in various formats. It is not physical data, and neither admin data such as course resources, student enrollments, admin, other admin data, and not electronic records management system. You probably are aware ANU has been the victim of a data breach that has affected personal data detected in 2019. All the available information and, adv and advice on protecting your personal data can be found online. What is data management? Data management can be defined as any or all of the following examples. Data management involves organizing, protecting, and distributing the data. Data organization is about working more efficiently with data. For instance, organizing data into directories, folders, and naming files in a systematic manner. Synchronizing your data between laptop, desktop, USB, and cloud storage, and version control. Data administration will ensure compliance with the requirements of data management policies, such as how often you back up your data, validation and authentication. It is important to ensure your data, the accuracy, uh, a form of verification to pass verification is introduced uh, for some um, projects. That's where data is entered twice to ensure it matches original source. For data documentation, I'll introduce you a tool called AU eNotebooks later on. Access control and security. It is important to consider the security of your data to prevent theft of valuable data, to prevent breach of confidentiality agreements and, pri and privacy laws. For data archiving, it is to choose a trusted system to archive your data. And uh, before I talk about uh, the following terms and phrases, I, may I raise three questions here. The first one, where would you store your data at the completion of your project? The first one, where would you store your data at the completion of your project? Second one, what access will you provide to the data set on completion of the project? What access will you provide? Third question, how will you enable others to reuse your research data? I hope these phrases uh, will give you some clues, uh, such as how you might share um, and your data and what license you will choose and or you set up your own sharing terms and um, convert formats and choose standards and set up access restrictions for reuse and provide metadata for your data 
and um, choosing a trusted system and the fair principles. If the selected system meets fair principles, um, fair principles, uh, fair stands for findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable. Uh, details of fair principles can be found uh, in the training menu or if you Google fair principles online. Here is a data life cycle. It has eight components. It provides an overview of the stages involved in successful management and preservation of data for use and reuse. Data management plan describes how the data will be managed and made accessible throughout its lifetime. Collect data and the data are placed into a digital form. Assure the data of the quality of the data are assured through checks and inspections. Describe data are accurately and thoroughly described using the appropriate metadata standards. Preserve data are submitted to an appropriate long term archive. Discover potentially useful data are located and obtained along with the relevant information about the data, that is, metadata. Integrate. Data from disparate sources are combined to form one set of data that can be readily anal anal analyzed. Data are analyzed. Please keep in mind uh, some pro research projects might use only part of the life cycle. For instance, a project might focus on discover, integrate, analyze while another project might focus on primarily collecting data and analysis, which might bypass the discover and integrate steps. Why do you need to manage your data? Uh, here are some um, summarized uh, points. I would like everybody um, to be aware. Um, the first question I would like to ask everybody is, among many published papers every year, how would you stand out? And uh, here, there are two papers uh, people um, um, have published about data reuse and the open data citation advantage, bringing citations and the usage metrics together to make data count. Reproducibility. Reproducibility is backbone of translation research to outcome. It refers to the ability of a researcher to duplicate the results of a prior study using the same materials and procedures as were used by the original investigator. Hazir is a pre-webinar email. We'll um, give and provide attachment for everybody to have a look, a list of reproducibility tools. Back to this greater exposure, enhanced reputation and prestige, I would like to add another comment. Many organizations have been working on infrastructure to facilitate sharing and the reuse of research data. One of them is to develop data level metrics. Hopefully in the future, when you share your data, you will get credit for it. Uh, you also um, need to protect your data against the loss or improper access. Um, definitely you would like to work more efficiently with data. Why do you need to manage your data continued? There are two big drivers here. One of them is funding bodies. The other is from journals, publishers, uh, such as Nature, Science, Plus, Wiley has joined in this club too. They require you sharing your data when you submit your manuscript for publishing. As a researcher, you are required to comply with ethical and privacy regulations. 
how you manage your data. How do you manage your data? And we provide some of the tools uh, for you in chapter four. And for data organization, working more efficiently with data, the library under digital literacy training um, team uh, offers you trainings on EndNote, Mendeley, and uh, Zotero is run, is run irregularly by Crawford School. If you would like to know the next available session, please let me email me and uh, I will find out for you. For version control and file naming, uh, there are three tools listed, um, Tortoise SVN, GitHub, and uh, Bitbucket. GitHub is a web-based control, version control repository, host of source code. Bitbucket works similarly. One main difference between GitHub Bitbucket is Bitbucket will make your repositories private by default, and you will need to pay to get your repositories publicly available. And GitHub was bought out last year by Microsoft, and they work like this. They make your repositories publicly available. If you would like to make them private, you will need to pay. For file transfers, um, AU provides Cloud Store, Home Drive, OneDrive, SharePoint. I'm just showing you the cloud store. This is a um, after login page. You can search cloud store from any homepage. You'll find the login. And here, this is a file center of cloud store. When I click on a file, I can choose a file and uh, the name will be listed here. And uh, I can type in a recipient's email, email address and uh, give it a subject and a message, and I can click on send. Oh, sorry, my login just, uh, let's do it again. Uh, please um, have a look at this button, File Encryption. Uh, Cloud Store offers end-to-end -end encryption service. Uh, you, if you would like to encrypt your data, always talk to your local IT support staff. After I click on Send, and uh, it says Upload Complete and Close, and uh, a file has been sent. Uh, that's cloud store file sending um, for um, transfer files. For data administration, uh, you better check how often your data is backed up if it's stored in an NU computer, as it does automatically, uh, but uh, the frequency may vary school by school, and uh, you will need to set up access control. Uh, who can um, edit your data? Who can access your data? And the data archiving and sharing, um, if you would like to share your data, uh, remember to choose a license, uh, either Creative Commons license, one of them, or Science Commons licenses, or one, one of them. And use data management services. Uh, while some of us are um, working from home, so I have added cyber safety at home and NU virtual information commons, uh, these two uh, web pages developed by um, NU IT services. Uh, if you go to, this is a cyber safety homepage, and then from here, there is a very helpful user guide. Uh, please do take a look. Um, there are very important tips uh, for you to take while you work for, from home. Uh, you need to protect your data. Uh, and a couple of tips I have uh, uh, picked up. One of them is about teleconferencing. 
uh, if when you conduct more confidential discussions, then Microsoft Teams is recommended uh, for encrypting, encrypting your data. Uh, always check with your local IT support um, and or if look at this guide to see there are tools for you to uh, encrypt your data. And the AU's virtual information commons uh, provides you a list of software tools you can download while you work from home and some reference documents also available. And the central IT support, um, they manage, central IT manages home drive, OneDrive, SharePoint. Uh, AU library supports you on training. Statistical consulting unit um, provides face-to-face -face consulting services. Uh, when you need assistance on statistic, statistical tools such as SPSS and label, uh, please uh, contact Statistical Consulting Unit. Uh, and you also provide you Data Commons Open Research, a Australian Data Archive, those repositories for you to deposit your data. There's another one, Supercomputer, National Computational Infrastructure. I'll do, I have a look at um, those um, services, some of them for you. Uh, this is an AU eNotebooks. I uploaded one file and uh, I'll demo of one feature to you, view revisions. And it says when I uploaded and when I updated, I can revert to the original version. So this is a NUE Notebooks one feature. Uh, a part of that NUE Notebooks can secure long-term repository storage of research data. It uses a notebook format that can be used by researchers from any discipline. It facilitates sharing and collaboration. It provides a full versioning history for every entry. The data stored um, in IUE notebooks in, uh, are stored in Australia. And uh, here is the um, Australian Data Archive homepage. Um, if you want to access data here, yeah, click on this button and depositing data and they also have popular data, new data, news, and user guides. Uh, very easy to use web page. I think I also would like to take the opportunity to, dis to demonstrate Open Research, that's the home page, and also a record in This is a typical journal article. And um, on the right side, um, you can see the statistics of this article from Open Research page, uh, how many downloads, views, etc. Uh, you can also see the traditional bibliometric um, data from Web of Science database. This paper has been said, cited five times. And um, Dimension Citation Badge is to showcase the citation data for individual publications. Above it, it's an altimetric score, which is two for this article. And you can click on see more details uh, to see what uh, make, uh, made this number two for this article. Altimetric, instead of tracking academic attention, it tracks broader attention, including citations on Wikipedia, 
and in public policy documents, discussions on research blogs, mainstream media coverage, bookmarks on reference managers like Mendeley, and the mentions on social networks such as Twitter and Facebook. That's the details. It's the Altmetric Donut. the home page I have demonstrated. Some features about NU Data Commons. Users can deposit data for long-term storage. We can mint DOIs for you. DOI stands for Digital Object Identifier. It's a persistent identifier for data sets and commonly used for journal articles and conference papers. Users can self-archive via web interface. Data can be restricted or open. Metadata can be restricted or open. Some more features about data commons. You can, um, as long as uh, storage is accessible via URL, data commons can link to it. And working in progress data can be stored and a larger data set over 10 gigabytes can be uploaded via command line. Think of the Data Commons just recently has been updated to um, a very new, this new web interface. So it hasn't been opened up. Okay, I will do a search. And data Commons. This is a home page of ANU Data Commons. It's uh, very similar to open research. Um, you can contribute your research data. You can do a search and you can click on research data management web pages. And there are some very useful links on managing your data and the policies, procedures, and the research publications, planning your research. And if I click on one of the recent submissions on the right side, um, hopefully you will notice this is a request data files button. Um, if you would like to request access, that's how you click on the link and make a request. Uh, everyone in AU is given a 4.5 gigabytes home drive. You can access um, home drive via this link. Office 365 and um, offers a package of tools for you to use. SharePoint is a very good one for collaborative um, work and uh, OneDrive stores your personal documents. Digital literacy training offers support training on EndNote, digital research, and Vivo SPSS, publishing with LaTeX, and uh, this one, research data management, and uh, Word um, for academic writing, working with data in Excel. Uh, feel free to make a booking via this link. All AU computers are protected by Intercept X. Uh, however, if you work from home, uh, you are strongly encouraged to install an antivirus software. Uh, there is a comparison table from this link. The national computational infrastructure is not only the fastest supercomputer in Australia, it also hosts very large data sets of national significance um, or a new staff and students can apply for access. Benefits of digital archiving, uh, it's for long-term storage of end-of-life data, and uh, it also helps to convert data formats that are durable and free. Uh, you are the, if you are the data owner, you set up access restrictions. Um, I would say you make your data as open as possible, as closed as necessary. I think I hope um, the previous three questions I asked everyone, I hope the following slides will help to answer 
um, those questions. Now I'm giving you a break by watching this YouTube video. I have copied. Hello, my name is Dr. Judy Benign. I'm an oncologist at NYU School of Medicine. Hello, Dr. Judy Benign. I read your article on B cell function. I think that I could use the data for my work on pancreatic cancer. I am not an oncologist. I know, but I think I could use the data for my work on pancreatic cancer. Do you have the data? Everything you need to know is in the article. No. What I need is the data. Will you share your data? I am not sure that will be possible. But your work is in PubMed Central and was funded by NIH. That is true. And it was published in Science, which requires that you share your data. I did publish in Science. Then I am requesting your data. Can I have a copy of your data? I am not sure where my data is. But surely you saved your data. I did. I saved it on a USB drive. Where is the USB drive? It is in a box. It is in a box at home. I just moved. But can I use your data? There are many boxes. So many boxes. I forgot to label the boxes. Hello again. Thank you for sending me a copy of your data on a USB drive. I received the envelope yesterday. You are welcome, but I will need that back when you are finished. That is my only copy. I did have a question. What is your question? You might find the answer in my article. No. I received the data, but when I opened it up, it was in hexadecimal. Yes, that is right. I cannot read hexadecimal. You asked for my data and I gave it to you. I have done what you asked. But is there a way to read the hexadecimal? You will need the program that created the hexadecimal file. Yes, I will. What is the name of the program? Cytosynth. I do not know this program. It was a very good program. The company that made the program went bankrupt in 2007. Do you have a copy of the program? I do not use this program anymore because the company that made it went bankrupt. Maybe you can buy a copy on eBay. I have good news. You again. I talked to my colleague. She knew a person with a copy of the software. Then why do you need me? Everything you need to know about the data is in the article. I opened the data and I could not understand it. If you have the program, you will find it as clear. Well, I noticed that you called your data fields SAM. Is that an abbreviation? Yes, it is an abbreviation of my co-author's name. His name is Samuel Lee. We call him SAM. I see. And what is the content of the field called SAM1? Ah, yes. SAM1 is the level of CXCR4 expression. And what is the content of the field called SAM2? That is logical if you think about it. What is the content of the field called SAM2? I don't remember. What about SAM3? Is there a guide to the data anywhere? Yes, of course. It is the article that is published in Science. The article does not tell me what the field names mean. Is there any record of what these field names mean? Yes. My co-author knows what the content of SAM2 is and SAM3. And SAM4. Can I talk to your co-author? I'm not sure. I would very much like to talk to your co-author. Well, he was a graduate student. He went back to China two years ago. Can I have his contact information? He is in China. His name is Sam Li. I think I cannot use your data. You could check the article to see if what you need is there. Please stop talking now. I hope you enjoyed the video as, well, as much as I did. Um, if Sam Li had an ORCID ID, it would make it easier for people to contact him. ORCID stands for Open Researcher and Contributor ID.
it's persistent. It's a persistent identifier for people. Uh, after you register, you register, you will have a 16 digit number. It will belong to you throughout your scholarly career. Orchid is to solve the problem of name ambiguity and a name change. Uh, all NU researchers are encouraged to register an Orchid ID. At the moment, um, Australian Research Council and the National Health and Medical Research Council, NHMRC, both require researchers when they apply for funding, uh, they will need to provide their ORCID ID. Data management plan, it's the last topic of this workshop. Um, if the best time to make a data management plan is at the beginning of a project, uh, from 2020, Australian Research Council will require that data management plans are in place prior to the commencement of the project. And some uh, universities have made it compulsory to make a data management plan, uh, such as Deakin University. Uh, you can click on this link and to have a look at ARC's uh, policy uh, requirements on this. NU has developed an online um, the data management plan tool for you to um, create a plan. This is a homepage of DMP tool. You can click on get started and um, choose option one, type in the Australian National University, click on go. And uh, you will be required to use your NU login. Click on create plan and uh, type in your research project name and uh, select the primary research organization, which is Australian National University. For the third question, temporarily you just click on no funder associated with this plan. And later on, you will have the opportunity to add funding information, click on create plan. And here um, you can see all the details. Um, you will be prompted up to enter project start, project end date, and um, your funder name and the grant number. And the next tab, tab you can add contributors. Uh, if you would like to know how you can make a plan. There's a plan overview. Um, so you certainly you can have a look. The data collection, what data will you collect or create? Documentation and metadata, storage and backup, selection and preservation, data sharing, responsibilities and resources. Uh, the next tab to write a plan, basically um, there will be under these headings, for example, if you click on ethics and legal compliance, you will add your details here. On the right side, uh, they will list some explanations to you here, questions to consider. Also, the, this is a place where you address any security issues and uh, potential solutions. Share, how would you like to share the plan? and download. You can download to PDF, which is a more closed fixed um, um, format. You can certainly download to a Word document and then you add it further. That's a data management plan tool. Basically, data management plan is to answer questions like what research data will be created, what policies apply to the data, who will own and have access to the data, what data management practices will be used. 
what facilities and equipment will be required and who will be responsible for each aspect of the plan. Metadata. Metadata is information, refers to information about your data. How will you make other people can reuse your data? And uh, metadata is a good way to tell people what is this data set about, title, time, author, keywords, relations to other data objects, ownership and use permissions, and provenance, sorry. Provenance, where does it come from? History of changes to the data versions and any standard schemas you are using. Metadata to consider these elements um, and uh, like such as data processing performed, who collects the data, sponsor or funding agencies, why the data were collected, etc. Uh, there are some examples I'll show you. I'll show you two examples. One example is from Research Data Australia. The other is from Open Research. This is a record available in Research Data Australia. Research Data Australia is, a, is an aggregator. It indexes over 100 Australian data repositories. It's a good place for you to search any Australian data set. And um, a typical metadata will be title and investigators and also the original data repository called Australia Ocean Data Network. And a full description, access the data, you can click on the link. And um, site data, how you can cite this data. This, it provides an example, including the DOI for this data set. If you click on this DOI, it also will direct you to where it's originally stored. And the license and the rights, you can click on view details. If you scroll down, you will see more metadata, such as data time period and related organizations, related people. And this is um, a map, a Google map, to show you where the research was conducted and the subjects and other information some relevant links. That's one example in Research Data Australia. There is um, Open Research Record. I would like to show you. That's uh, um, a title that's a recent book chapter. It uh, doesn't have much information. I'll show you a journal article. The metadata will include title, author, abstract, and the scroll down you will find year publication and the type of publication and the handle link and DOI and the open access status. And um, if you click on show full item record, you will see more metadata such as ISSN, etc., and publisher name. For further information, please go to download research data manual training menu from this link. And uh, you also developed a data management lib guide. I think I have the lib guide open, or I can quickly do a search. And you add the management lib guide. From the lib guide, you can find out all AU data services. 
it's a bit slow, sorry. And you can also um, click on the policies link. You find uh, the in use research data management policy and other relevant policies from funding bodies. And also there is a section for you to assist you how you can cite uh, data. More resources can be found. Um, LibGuide I have showed you. And there's another good place is ARDC, Australian Research Data Commons. They provide a very uh, updated free online webinar. Feel free to attend uh, the ones you are interested. Uh, ARDC a few years ago developed a very useful program called 23 Research Data Themes. I strongly recommend you to do a Google search, find the own web page, and uh, have a look at some of the things you might be interested in. IE3data.org, the last question I'm asking everyone is this. If you are not choosing an institutional repository, uh, where, what else can I choose from? How can I find a repository? How about a subject-based repository? And IE3data.org is a very good place for you to find out. To locate a repository in your area. And you will find um, results on um, 284 Earth Sciences, and uh, you can explore further each of those repositories. Uh, it's a very good place for you to find out a suitable repository. And uh, also some publishers may require you when you deposit your, your data, the repository you are choosing has been indexed by IU3data.org. Also, you can use um, FAIR principle self-assessment tool um, to see if uh, a repository meets FAIR principles. There's another place for you to find a list of data repositories. It's um, from PLOS. Is it coming? Oh, this link might not be working. And um, NU um, also developed Top Data to me. There are some uh, video clips over there to help you learning research data management. And um, data repositories from PLOS, I think that might still be running if I click on that. Yep, it's working. And uh, here you will find uh, some relevant information. I think the link to the appropriate repositories is here. It has some cross-disciplinary repositories listed, such as Dry Add Flick Share, and uh, along with others. And uh, other discipline-based um, repositories are listed under their discipline names. Top tips from this workshop, um, three of them, have a data management plan and back up your data, register an ORCID. The most important message taking home is back up your data. We'd love your feedback. Please go to this link to provide your feedback. Many thanks for listening. Feel free to contact me for any questions you may have. Thank you.